The race is on to develop a vaccine for the Zika virus, and some experts are looking to a different type of platform, DNA vaccines. Researchers believe DNA vaccines could be a solution to modern medicine's quest to prevent transmission of infectious diseases. Why? Because a DNA vaccine takes the genetic material of a pathogen, encoding just enough for the body to develop an immune response to it without introducing the virus itself. DNA vaccines haven't been licensed for use in humans in the U.S. yet, but building on about two decades of work in the field, two camps aim to push the technology forward with a vaccine for Zika. One is overseen by the National Institutes of Health. The other is a partnership among companies and researchers, including biotech firm Inovio and David Weiner, a pioneer in the field. Dr. Weiner has been developing DNA vaccines since the 1990s. We started working on DNA vaccines because it solved, in our minds, conceptual problems that exist with all vaccines. Traditional vaccines are made from a virus. Live vaccines, like the one for smallpox, contain a weakened version of the virus, producing an immune response without causing the severe effects of the disease. Non-live vaccines, such as the ones for rabies, are made from a virus that has been killed. But while live vaccines can produce lifelong immunity, they're often difficult to produce and distribute, and require refrigeration. They also can cause problems for people with immune deficiencies. Non-live vaccines, on the other hand, don't trigger as strong of an immune response. Non-live vaccines traditionally do not produce killer T cells, the Navy SEALs of the immune system that clear out viruses hiding or cancers. DNA vaccines offer advantages because unlike traditional vaccines, the virus doesn't have to be grown. So a vaccine can be produced more quickly than traditional methods, and they can also be stored at room temperature. The Inovio Zika vaccine works by injecting a synthetic form of DNA from the virus under the skin. But one challenge has been that once injected, the DNA isn't easily absorbed into cells. The Inovio Zika vaccine, now in clinical trials, addresses that by delivering a mild electrical current on top of the shot that temporarily opens cell membranes. The technique, called electroporation, helps cells absorb the DNA so it can generate proteins that spur an antibody response, according to Dr. Pablo Tebas, who is leading a Novio Zika trial at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. So after the first dose is given and the cells open a little bit during the electrical current and then they enclose these last milliseconds, the cells start making the protein and pump it out into the, the blood. That's what the immune system sees. Some of the earliest efforts to create DNA vaccines targeted diseases such as HIV and the herpes virus, but they didn't produce a strong enough immune response. In general, almost all of those studies showed very similar outcomes. That was uh, antibodies were very, very low, and the majority of the field kind of hit a dead end. Roughly eight years after West Nile virus appeared in the United States, the NIH announced it had developed a DNA vaccine that produced a strong response in humans in the first phase of a clinical trial. But the NIH couldn't find a partner to help fund the trial because the virus was no longer perceived as a major health threat. So further testing wasn't completed. Meanwhile, Weiner and the Inovio team eventually retooled their approach to make the DNA more potent creating synthetic versions of a virus's DNA that induced a stronger immune response in return. In 2015, Inovio reported that its synthetic DNA vaccine successfully cleared cervical lesions caused by the human papillomavirus in nearly half of the women who received it. After hearing reports that Zika was spreading in South America last year, the NIH and Inovio researchers jumped on designing a DNA vaccine for it. It took around seven months to go from not having the vaccine and to the point of being able to give it to individuals in a phase one trial, only seven months. Normally it's a process that can take up to two years. In the summer of 2016, both teams began human clinical trials for their respective DNA vaccines against Zika. Their first step is to prove that a new vaccine candidate is safe. We want to make sure that people that get the vaccine don't have very serious side effects. And then we want to see if the participants that receive the vaccine makes antibodies and cellular immune responses against the vaccine. With all of the promise that DNA vaccines hold, 
skeptics question whether it will be possible to make enough synthetic DNA to supply vaccines for the target population. And the possible extra step involving electroporation devices could create a barrier, particularly in developing countries. Even with the current clinical trials underway, it may be years before a DNA vaccine for Zika is FDA approved. Still, Dr. Weiner and Dr. Tebas are hopeful that their years of work on DNA vaccines will finally pay off, not only with a vaccine for Zika, but also with technology that allows scientists to more swiftly craft vaccines against new threats while they're still emerging.